I know Professor Kindiki is a very nice person. Mm -hmm. But at times when you're operating in a bad system, the fall air consumes you and when you get out of a room with a lot of fall air, nobody will know the difference whether it is you who created that false smell or the people inside created the false smell. The, the blame will squarely come at your doorstep. Because it is you they have seen coming out of a toilet that is stinking. <laughs> that if you see somebody beating your dog, the person is looking for you. These are being, uh, he's backing dogs. Mm -hmm. Now they can no longer back on the enemy. They have to back either on the owner or they have to back aimlessly mm -hmm. in the compound mm -hmm. and therefore not achieve whatever they expected. Truly delighted to have you on Richard Mwenja exclusive, the year of our Lord 2024. And it indeed is an honor and privilege to always have you on board. Today we're discussing a plethora of issues in the world of politics and governance, from the increased heckling uh, aimed at President Ruto's rallies and what that means, to also matters to do how we can recalibrate our leadership style as Kenya so that we take this uh, country to the next uh, front of growth and prosperity. And with me to dissect on that conversation is none other than the firebrand himself, the first of his name, former minister, Kipruto Arab Kiro. Great to see you, sir. It's my, ple my pleasure, Richard. Still aging gracefully like fine wine? <laughs> At times, uh, I don't know whether it is true. Uh, it is. At times when I walk, I feel the weight is uh, bearing <laughs> unnecessary pressure on my feet. Uh -huh. But I hope things are better. Mm -hmm. There are many other people. With the other day, we had uh, mm -hmm. we had a get together of students who left Mangui in 1980, Form Four, mm -hmm. and uh, out of about 80 of us, we realized uh, we were able to gather about 20, which is a quarter of the number. Unfortunately, we were able to count almost 18 have left us since we left school. Those are the ones we can remember. And uh, some more prominent people, like uh, Dr. Washira uh, Gashagwa, oh. the brother of the deputy president, was in our class. Uh, and he was practicing in South Africa, unfortunately, passed on more than 10 years ago. So at times when you are still alive and breathing, you thank God for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people, we look for, as you get to our age, you are more worried about your health than about your wealth. Mm -hmm because your wealth becomes increasingly ir irrelevant to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is you are wondering whether your children will be able to sustain the same process mm -hmm. or they are going to waste it. So when you say I'm aging gracefully, it is a compliment. Mm -hmm. And I wish many people would see that. <laughs> Maybe the secret lies in taking much of royal jelly. Royal jelly, you promised me, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll come to, to Mosbridge uh -huh. and I'll get it from the farm uh -huh. at that dam, uh -huh. uh, Kimoson. At a small fee, though. At a small fee, because I like paying for what I take. Good. Yeah, I'm not like some other people. Who love gifts. Uh, who love gifts for nothing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Including land. Yeah, you, how can somebody gift you with 200 acres or even a, a thousand acres? What would I, would you have done to that particular person? But only, honestly speaking, uh, during your time as the uh, as, as the agriculture minister, none ever gifted you so hearts of cattle, land, you name it. You know, there is the the rules that we made for ourselves. I don't think we punished ourselves. It gave us a way of um, restraining oneself from uh, excesses of the power mm -hmm. that goes with the office. Mm -hmm. And we made a rule which is still there in law that you can be gifted, but not more than uh, something worth 20,000. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they can talk of 200,000 today, mm -hmm. given the time uh, it has, it's now over 20 years. So otherwise, th th those are the rules that we used. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if I took a loan and I bought something then, and something is of value today, it's a product of me being there at that particular time mm -hmm. and accessing, knowing that I was earning so much that any loan whether 10,000, 10 million, 20 million, my salary could sustain it. Mm -hmm. 
Otherwise, uh, if somebody gave me a gift, he can, uh, he can uh, engage us in uh, online <laughs> in the next uh, episode. Sure. Yeah. But have you made peace with the fact that you're not a billionaire when many others who serve <laughs> in dockets like the one you held, I mean, do, uh, after their wealth declaration, they are billionaires. <laughs> you, know, you know, I take a lot of solace <laughs> in the fact that uh, the founding father of Tanganyika, Mwalimu <laughs> uh, Julius Kambara Kenyerere, when he died, there was an equivalent of um, ten thousand dollars in his account, mm -hmm. and uh, the land that he inherited from his forefathers within the Butiama area is only fifty-two acres, and I have more land than that. So, if Nyerere is now a renowned figure internationally, it is lack of capacity, but not lack of wealth. <laughs> This wealth, nobody will remember you. And in his bed in uh, St. Thomas, London, when one of his assistants asked him, why are you so in, in pensive mood? Are you okay today? He said, I'm worried that if I don't recover from this disease, I don't know whether Tanzanians will be able to keep the ideals that we have built over time. Mm -hmm. He was not worried about the wealth. He was worried about his soul, and the soul of Tanzanians, whether they will maintain the values they had built, inculcated in people mm -hmm. over a period of about 20-something years. Rightly put, and the conversation for the day begins now. Uh, Kiprito Arab Kiro, mm -hmm. uh, very recently we've seen the president being heckled uh, in a number of his rallies, especially those uh, rallies based in his political bastions, Kericho, Bomet, you name it. And it's not the first time that they're happening within the last six months. And it begs the question, why now? Why is it happening now? And maybe what could be the writing on the wall that President Ruto is not seen? Well, there, there are a number of things. <laughs> uh, and the principal among them are three. One, the president for five years with his team were, were practically in the opposition. <laughs> and they were vilifying the government of the day and they were blaming anything that went wrong on Uhuru, who was their president at that particular time. And therefore, they got used to filification of the status quo and uh, excusing themselves that it is the president mm -hmm. who has failed to perform, and therefore certain things affecting society would continue unabated. Then the second issue was President Ruto had a strong team of loyal supporters, whether MCS, whether members of parliament, and therefore their no moral in call was to condemn the government they were part of and that to Raya they were fighting for them. But when the president won the election, they find themselves in a very awkward position because they still need to continue agitating. But the person in state house is no longer Uru Kenyatta, it's William Ruto. And they cannot attack him. The second point from that is that William Ruto is held with a lot of fear within the government and within the UDA party system. Mm -hmm. And therefore, no member of parliament will be able to look at William Ruto on the eye and say the things they used to say against Uhuru in the past. So the public is wondering whether this is still the same team that we supported for five years against Uhuru or this is another team that we elected in the last election. That's why there is that backlash almost everywhere. The leaders who are their champions at that time cannot champion anything because they don't have the courage to face William Ruto on the eye and tell him this is the way things are on the ground. Uh -huh. This far, a number of Kenya Kwanzaa legislators have actually uh, dismissed uh, themselves from the allegation that uh, the heckling was uh, targeted at the president, but instead it was targeted at the local leadership. How true could that be? Well, it's a product of both. <laughs> And um, at times they say in uh, the part of the country I come from that if you see somebody beating your dog, the person is looking for you. 
these are being uh, he's backing dogs now they can no longer back on the enemy they have to back either on the owner or they have to back him mm -hmm. in the compound mm -hmm. and therefore not achieve whatever they expected so it is both the president is not able to deliver within the shortest time possible and therefore there is backlash against him mm -hmm. You've realized even some of the heckling, would, you, would, you'd see he had to go to vernacular at some stage to, to be able to calm the crowd, then come back with the houses that will cost 3,000 shillings and you stay in a house. I don't know whether he meant rent or he meant that outright purchase 3,000, Maureen will have a house. Okay. 3,000 shillings. 3, All of us will have houses. Yeah, and I think that will be the best Kenya. Mm -hmm. But I know he never meant that because he was on top of a, or on the roof of a car. Mm -hmm. And policies are never made on the roofs of vehicles. They are made in offices. In boardrooms. Yeah, in, in boardrooms. Mm -hmm. And implemented on the ground by the right people. Mm -hmm. Not the president pronouncing himself on all manner of issues. Mm -hmm. Some may not even, he may not remember after two days. Moving on swiftly. And I want actually to understand what you make of the new directive by the CS for Interior, Kithure Kindiki. That of uh, the, uh, the arrest uh, of financiers, uh, organizers, and even the hecklers themselves. Henceforth, should anyone heckle at the president, the rallies, then uh, they'll be prosecuted. How effective is that likely to, to turn in, uh, out? Well, I don't know whether those hecklers have been financed. And uh, if Professor Kituke, Kidure Kindiki believes they have been financed, then he should tell us who is financing them because he must be privy to the information from intelligence system. Mm -hmm. Number two, that goes against the constitutional order mm -hmm. that you can heckle anybody, you can pick it, you can make noise mm -hmm. as long as you are not armed against anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I would invite him to read the right section of the law. Mm -hmm. It will assist him because I know Professor Kindiki is a very nice person. Mm -hmm. But at times when you're operating in a bad system, the fall air consumes you. And when you get out of a room with a lot of fall air, nobody will know the difference whether it is you who created that false smell or the people inside created the false smell. The, the blame will squarely come at your doorstep. Because it is you they have seen coming out of a toilet that is stinking. <laughs> 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 right, Libu, then shifting gears, but still on matters, uh, the hostile crowds the president is receiving, it begs the question, come the 2027 general election, should he seek a second term? Are we likely to see Rift Valley take him home? No, uh, I, I still strongly believe, and, and, and I like being practical. Mm -hmm. We still go three and a half years, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of things will emerge. Some of the candidates that uh, you expect to run may not even be there in the running. And uh, I, I like it that way because you may say William Ruta is now dismissed. If I was planning for the opposition, if I was a strategist for the opposition, mm -hmm. that is not the pair of notes that I will take home. Mm -hmm. I still believe William Ruta is a formidable candidate in the next election. And many things may happen that will work in his favor. And uh, as I've said before, William Ruta will win or lose the next election on the basis of his promises. And if Kenyans will still remember the promises he made, including reduction of the cost of animal feed, including reduction of uh, all aspects of production, whether it's in crop, uh, including spending more money in research, all those factors will conspire either to take him home or to retain him. Mm -hmm. But I still believe that Rift Valley, despite all the noise, may still vote for him. It may still vote the for him. The challenge in Rift Valley uh -huh. may still vote for him. I, I'm trying to be fair to him, mm -hmm. but it is not going to be easy ride like the last time. Moving on swiftly, the second in command, the deputy president, has actually implored uh, uh, local leaders to actually make sure we, we don't see more of heckling and disruption of the president rallies. Well, he has a role to clothe the president when he's naked as the second in command. But do you think he's this far overstepping his mandate in as far as that is concerned? Uh, 
Well, I think he finds himself on the wrong side of the equation. You know, this is a team that anything could go in the last election. This is a team that believed that Uru Kenyatta was done and finished. And when they see Uru Kenyatta appearing, whether it is in a wedding or a church function, is applauded and respected, he has gained back his own respect, they are bothered because they had underrated Uru Kenyatta. But the situation has changed. That's why I'm saying three and a half years is a long period. Anything can happen that even the president himself may not find it tenable to run again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now that it seems sort of a, a crime to air your, your frustrations to the government, uh, public health, heckling, picketing, or whatever form of uh, actions you can use to imply that you are not happy with what the government is doing, so how best then can Kenyans express their sovereign power to take concern with the government and how it's uh, implementing its agenda? Well, there are options in the constitution. They can take power, take away, take back power from the elected leaders to themselves, mm -hmm. but of course that process is so laborious. Mm -hmm. My take would have been, and I've always insisted, on those in power to take the initiative mm -hmm. that we have national conversation, national discourse, national discourse that nobody comes to, the to that particular desk with their offices. They come with clean arms that we are Kenyans, we want to understand what's happening in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can resolve some of the issues. Otherwise, this public outrage is increasing every day because I'm not seeing any panacea that will visit this town to assist us reduce some of the challenges we are faced with. Mm -hmm. Today, if you borrow a million shillings, at the end of the year, you will pay 1,250,000 uh -huh. because interest rate is at 25%. In the past, you would have to pay 100,000 perhaps above the 1 million that you had borrowed. Very well. Kenyans are finding it impossible to live. For example, if you do proper calculation, somebody earning 50,000 today, and he has to go through the normal process, renting a house for, a house for 10,000 somewhere, eating in the morning, in the evening, in between, taking a matatu, paying for electricity, paying for water, paying for NHIF, paying for electric, for, for SHIF. SHIF. SHIF or SHIF, <laughs> yeah, I call it SHIF or SHIFT. So when you do all these things, you end up with negative 15,000, which means that person should have been earning 65,000 to be almost at par, that you are eating every day you are eating what you are, you are earning what you are eating. Hand to mouth. Hand to mouth. And therefore you cannot even buy a house for 3,000. The one of uh, William Luther. <laughs> Very well. And, and, and let me ask you this then. Uh, if this is the trend that that's, uh, we're going to experience, so what remains of Kenyans who believe they were hustlers, they were promised heavens by the president, but now we are seeing gates flooding with nothing but disappointments. So what message do you have for them? Are you seeing a possible a Damascus moment for the president anytime soon? Well, we just hope this economy, there will be a turnaround sooner than later. Mm -hmm. But all the indicators are not right. Mm -hmm. You as an economist, you know, sure. there are certain fundamental indicators that can talk of an economy mm -hmm. that is likely to do a turnaround within the shortest time possible. This one of ours may take up to eight years for us to experience if there are any good policies that the current regime is putting in place. Mm -hmm. So in the next eight years, either we'll be at home or we'll be doing his second and last time. Do you then consider that the president duped uh, his uh, biggest supporters during the campaigns, the hustlers, and right now he's taken a, uh, he has actually taken sort of a radical departure from what he promised to them? Well, possibly he himself uh, believed the story mm -hmm. because I don't think he would have wished to, to lie to the public. Or if he didn't believe the story, he never cared. He just wanted to win. And after winning, he realizes the office is different from the platform or the, car, the, the, the roof of a car. Mm -hmm. Because the practical reality is that there are certain things he cannot change, including the borrowing that was, uh, has been ended up to now. We are talking of trillions of, of shillings 
that cannot be paid by a shrinking economy. And he continues almost to exacerbate the negative growth by more taxes, companies almost choosing to relocate to other countries and make those places their major production centers, then Kenya becomes just a distribution center. These are some of the fundamentals that he needs to understand, that you cannot just tax people and you expect them to be positive. Mm -hmm. At times, less taxes uh, mean more revenue. Well, there you have it from the firebrand himself, Kipruto Arab Kiroa calling on the government to stop taking four steps ahead and six backwards. And that time is ripe for them to change around the situation for Kenyans, who many are grieved this far by how the government is taking on its policy agendas. And he actually predicts that probably more doom is on the way. We need to tighten our belts for a bumpy ride, uh, for actually a bumpy ride ahead. Uh, at this particular point, allow me to thank you for always tuning in and supporting our conversations here at Haman Manura channel. Remember to keep this conversation going beyond here. I'm at Mwenja Richard across all social media platforms. It is always an honor to have you on board. And for Kipri to Arab Kiro, always a pleasure. And we are truly uh, humbled by your commitment and always being the here for us. Yes, I strongly believe this is nation building. Mm -hmm. And you can serve your country from whatever position. Mm -hmm. You don't just say I've retired. Retired from what? As long as you are still breathing, mm -hmm. you are still of service to this country. Does it give you fulfillment, what you are doing now? It gives me a lot of uh, fulfillment, and I am happy mm -hmm. that I make some people not sleep well because they are not doing the right thing for Kenya. <laughs> yeah. Especially the church is taking concern with what you said about them. No, not, not the entire church. <laughs> I'm talking about some of the people <laughs> who masquerading as preachers <laughs> and yet they are politicians. So you know. Sure. Saying you cannot go to heaven because you have not paid two, two shillings, seven hundred, you know. 2.7 percent. Yeah, 2.75 percent. Mm -hmm. That is a preacher in the wrong place. Aren't you afraid that maybe your pastor is watching? My pastor, if he, if he is clean, <laughs> he should be watching every day. He should be watching. He should be and watching every day. Yeah, yeah. Because you see, we mm -hmm. need to be above reproach. Mm -hmm. And as long as you are still playing around with the lives of Kenyans, I don't entertain. Indeed, at that point takes us to the wrap of this conversation. Caesar's wife is beyond reproach. We need to borrow leave from that saying. Until next time on Richard Munch Exclusive, do enjoy the rest of your viewing.